Hi there, I'm Smith Kingston, house punk guru extraordinaire. Joining us today, we have Zoe Callan Cody, Yabon Tong Millen, and the phenomenal Pop Du Dubada. Okay, people, I know you've all been waiting, and it's here the bug video. Keeping your plants happy involves giving them the things that they need. But it also involves annihilating the things that they don't need. While you are much less likely to end up dealing with multi-legged or mycelial nemeses if you only bring plants home from well-established nurseries, some plant care aficionados, myself included, have a tendency to play it fast and loose by buying plants from amateur botanists at swap meets and farmers markets, or by participating in high-risk activities such as rescue operations that involve saving the lives of the underloved and overwatered houseplants who are at death's door after having spent months on the shelves of badly lit grocery stores. If this is the path that you have chosen, then as a houseplant guru extraordinaire, I salute you. But be warned that with this approach to houseplant hospitality, it is only a matter of time before you find yourself battling with beetles, scuffling with scales, fighting with fungi, or in an all-out melee with mealybugs. No matter your approach, every plant, even in isolation, is at some risk for an insect infestation. So being prepared for such a situation is my personal recommendation. Look, if you're watching this video because you've already got a problem, then fighting this fight may seem overwhelming. And hey, let's be real here, it can be tricky. But luckily for you, this houseplant guru extraordinaire knows the difference between what is tricky and what is impossible. The home defense method outlined in this video is effective against a wide variety of common multi-legged houseplant enemies, including red spider mites, white flies, mealybugs, fungus gnats, aphids, and scale. While some of these pests can be treated a little bit more effectively with other more specifically targeted pesticides, this approach is quick, easy, inexpensive, and only requires the use of chemicals that are relatively safe to use indoors compared with other types of pesticides. The tools and or ingredients necessary for this method are a one gallon home and garden pump sprayer, some water, three cups of a 70% solution of rubbing alcohol, regular non-concentrated Dawn dish soap, and a label maker. No, that's lame, okay? This is gonna look way cooler. Hey, my handwriting is immaculate, okay? And also, when you're a graffiti writer, you don't have handwriting, you have hand style, which is gonna look a little bit messy and be slightly more difficult to read, especially for a freaking Cal and Coey. That's probably accurate. Now, real quick about the sprayer. There's a good chance that you own one of these already and it might be tempting to just use the one you have. That's cool, but be absolutely sure that your sprayer has never housed any kind of weed killer. If you have any doubt as to the history of chemicals that have made their way through your sprayer, then I highly recommend just going and getting a new one. Even though your intentions may be pure, the slightest residue of Roundup or Ground Clear may be enough to ensure that this pesticidal treatment is the last care you ever offer to your leafy, bug-ridden friend. I don't want to talk about it. <clears throat> now these chemicals aren't that dangerous, but it still might be kind of fun to suit up. First, dump the three cups of rubbing alcohol into your empty home and garden sprayer, and then fill the bottle to just below the one gallon max fill line with water. Then add three tablespoons of dish soap and give it a stir, not a shake. Save the soap for last in order to avoid dealing with foam. 
If you didn't pay attention to that last part and now you've got dish soap slash alcohol foam all over everywhere, that's okay. Just go do all your shopping and then maybe make that phone call you've been procrastinating. Because even though she says she came up with that dark chocolate wild cherry cheesecake recipe all on her own, you know Dolores stole your recipe. And it's time you confronted her about it. And hopefully by the time you're done with all that, the foam will have settled. Foam or no foam, label that bottle. Pump that bottle up and hose those plants down. Be sure to hose your plant from every angle in order to ensure that every inch of your plant gets doused with this life-saving fluid. This may be difficult if you're dealing with the complex matrix of stems, leaves, and blossoms of a classically positioned succulent arrangement, but if this is the case, and hosing down every inch of plant is all the more necessary. I've sprayed this exact mixture on a wide variety of succulents and I've never seen any damage of any kind. I could be wrong, but I would venture to guess that an alcohol mixture diluted to this extent is probably safe to spray on virtually any kind of succulent. Other than fiddle leaf fig trees, I don't keep any tropical plants, and personally I've never needed to treat my fiddle figs for bugs. I have read online though that an alcohol solution this well diluted is safe to use on fiddle leaf fig trees and other tropical plants. I've also read horror stories of people burning holes in the leaves of their fiddle figs with alcohol solutions less diluted than this one. Now, I don't know, it could be safe, but personally, I would never spray this mixture onto any fern. The way this solution kills bugs is through allowing the combination of alcohol and dish soap to break down the oils and the cell membranes of the bug's exoskeletal armor, and then drying out so quickly that the sudden and extreme evaporation chills and dries out the bugs at the same time, sucking out the moisture stored within their exoskeletal armor so quickly that any affected bug has virtually no hope for survival. Again, it could be safe, but these are not conditions that I could ever imagine imposing onto the gorgeous, thin, delicate, and extremely moisture-sensitive leaves of a fern. I defend my ferns with other methods, but we're not going to get into that right now, at least in this video. At any rate, if you have a bug-infested plant and you're not sure whether this exact mixture will be safe to try, I recommend testing it by heavily dousing one leaf only and then waiting 48 hours. And if it looks like things are cool, then consider this undamaged leaf to be a green light as far as deciding whether or not to hose down the rest of your photosynthetic friend. Applied properly, this method can completely wipe out many types of pests in only one treatment. But some bugs undergo metamorphosis and are only vulnerable during certain phases of their life cycle. Female scale bugs, for example, insert their demonic piercing mouth parts into your poor house plant, feed on its vital juices, and then lock themselves into place by secreting a waxy shell under which they continue to feed on your plant's nourishing juices and lay their eggs. While in this protected state, they are impervious to treatments such as the one outlined in this video, but eventually the eggs hatch. And then, scale bugs in the nymph stage of their metamorphosis leave their mother's nasty, waxy, diabolical domicile and set out in search for a place to stick their own soul-sucking, plant-piercing mouth parts. If sprayed during this stage of their life cycle, then this treatment is highly effective. Mealybugs have a much longer window during which they are vulnerable but still lay their eggs inside of a vile, disgusting, waxy sack that protects them from alcohol-related treatments. Because of the overlapping generations of mealybugs and scale, it's a good idea to treat any plant infected with either of these two kinds of pests at four to seven day intervals over the course of about a month, with shorter intervals for heavier infestations. This regimen of treatments will help to ensure that bugs are sprayed during the intervals in which they are vulnerable.
If your plant is at death's door because of a particularly heavy infestation, there are other slightly less organic methods that will completely wipe out every single freaky little parasitic bugger with only one treatment. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life, but for me personally, if it's a choice between losing a plant and being a little bit less organic, then I say, show me the chemicals. But it's better to avoid this situation than to deal with it. And this is best achieved through constant vigilance. Find out which type of insect affects your specific species of houseplant, learn to recognize them, and then look for signs of an infection every time you water your plant. Hey, listen. Do you like bad graffiti, worse jokes, wacky macrame, and pretty good advice about how to take care of your houseplants? Well then subscribe. That's right, click that notification bell too so you never miss a new video.